Hi, this is Marcus King, and you're tuned in to the Prezx TV. What's going on, everybody? It's your guy, Rad. This is the exec, JB, and you're tuned in to the Prez X podcast at the Prez X TV. Tune in. Salute. Welcome, y'all, to another episode of the Presidential Executive. What's going on? This is your homie over here, JB. This is my brother over here, El Presidente Rag. What's going on, my boy? Man, what's going on, fella? What's the good word? Hey, you know, um, just doing our thing, man, on this good old Sunday, man. Man, you know you know how we do. You know what we do. Y'all know what we do. Y'all know what we do. Y'all go ahead right now, before you do anything, go ahead and like this video right now. We're on all podcast platforms, uh, wherever Whoa. we're at, wherever you stream platforms, that's where we are. Where, where are we at, right? You on man, we are on Apple Podcasts, mm -hmm. Google Podcasts. Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and, and Stitcher. Stitcher. Oh, he, he got it. We're Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe, too. Yeah, please, please, please. It's like a family reunion here, too, man. man like, it is. And it seems like I always just, say that, yeah. so, but it's kind of always like that when I say it. It is, bro. Because I wish he had a mic, because we, right. <laughs> we got, we have the prodigal son. I mean, and he's actually, he which y'all don't home. know, because I would tell him our guests, like, the pod, the birth of the podcast actually you're right that that because that's the band you know what i'm saying we had to get vic to be ringo yeah to replace to replace you know what i'm saying yeah. because the guy who originally he left huh? he had left he left you know right? what i'm saying and so we don't know where he is and now he, he don't come back do you we? know what i'm saying like this man had moved in the last 10 years he didn't lived in about Eight. six seven states at least like, Please. like he's slick, almost like a fugitive. I, I'm, I'm afraid uh, to ask him if he got bodies on him because I want to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I, I don't saying? need to know that, but you know. Yeah, no, nah, I, I got kids to raise, man. I got like my, you know, I done started over, so my kids gotta, they, they need me around. Yeah, so this, and actually, we we gonna get him on the camera here at some point. At you know, some it's, point, man. it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a long <laughs> night. That's all I'm gonna say. It's gonna be a long <laughs> night, but not not on this particular episode, but. We we got to get us some facial recognition here. He's actually the guy that produces the song, presidential. Executive. Yes, that y'all. Exactly. That is actually the and guy. Then, yeah, he was the one who made the beat as well as Nathan mixed beat, and mastered it and all of that. Sample did all that mm -hmm. stuff, right? Yeah, I actually remember he was yeah. making the beat. Yep. And as always, we got our good our good third third unofficial member of the podcast. No, he's not unofficial. He is a member. He came of the podcast. through. He, yeah. He's here, y'all. Got Crown Vic in. He's in here. The he, he had me by myself the last time. I had mm -hmm. to do the ones and twos. Uh, but we got a special guest here, man, and I, and I can't do him the service of introducing him like you can. You know what I mean? So I want you to go ahead and do the honor of introducing our distinguished guest. All right. So, man, uh, this, as, as he said, it's, it's slick like a family reunion because this is somebody who uh, grew up in the same home church with us uh, and has actually gone, man, to travel abroad, not just in the United States, but, you know, in the world. Yeah. Um, he is a, a singer, he is a vocalist, he has done some uh, recording, recording artist, uh, classically trained, uh, University of Memphis graduate, um, ha has a bachelor's and a master's, uh, and I'm going to let him tell it more because we, we were talking about it. You know, I know <laughs> I know they have to do, he's actually using his degrees though. Let's just put it like oh, this. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like a Power lot of us you. got degrees we're not using, but Power he's actually you. using his degrees. For sure. Uh, whether it be in vocal arrangement, um, just just music, uh, singing, like uh, he is definitely all of that, and and he is one of because we talked about it. It's kind of a niche thing almost, but it is not a lot of our people who are in uh, opera. Oh, for so sure, for sure, for sure, for he, sure. He does. He can't just. He don't just got the church voice. Like he can sing in church. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he's done that, mm -hmm. been doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, but he's great taking at it. it. Yeah, great, great at, at it. it. Phenomenal. At Phenomenal. It. Amazing. Um, Actually, I, I, why you said that? I want to bring up. You was my pop's favorite, bro. Like literally, oh, wow. he yeah. would bring him to tears <laughs> when you were saying. I forgot what song it was, but it was you know, like a solo joint, like for real. And my dad wasn't the one to kind of get emotional and stuff like that on the song but yeah. whenever you saw him, whatever song that was yeah yeah i had to I had to mention which, that I had which to mention one that. it might have been greatest that faithfulness or yeah, you that, know, yeah that's see. the one that's on rotation it, okay it might have been mm -hmm. that it might whatever yeah i, I just had to mention that because pops yeah. pops swore by you bro right yeah, yeah. yeah. and so man and, and again and it's crazy because even like you said our, our guy that's in here from out of town <laughs> is a lot of times when he was a part of the uh the media at the church you know a lot of times he was on the boards and stuff, you know, when you would be up there singing, you know, he'd be back there on the boards and stuff. 
So we got oh, we got to say he's out of towner now. Huh? Yeah, yeah, he's out of town. <laughs> yeah, he ain't a Memphis no more. No. Yeah, but uh, man, y'all, y'all, man, um, we we got the one, the only, the young legend, future goat, uh, Marcus King in the building. Yes, sir. Hello, hello. hello. What's going on, man? I'm well. I'm a bit tired from the year, but I'm, everything's good. Only from the year? Shoot. Yeah, yeah and it's just May. Like, he's already Man, tired. When, I, when I say the year, I mean the school year. Are you talking year. about yeah, the yeah, school yeah. year? Because I'm a music teacher, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah I do yeah. that and sing. So. Oh, yeah, you are tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, man. We, we finally got you in here. I know we were playing uh, tag a few times, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, trying to get some stuff uh, connected and dates and stuff like that. But. We finally got you glad in here before your summer gets real busy. I yep, heard. starting heard. this week. <laughs> so we 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 gonna, we gonna get to that. We gonna get to that because yeah, you're yeah, yeah. you are like you said a world renowned like traveler singer. You this is what you do. You don't talk about it. You you do it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't you know you ain't new to it. You true to it. You know what I mean? So, um, but let's let's start from the beginning. You know what I mean? We're gonna approach this like. The people don't know you like you yeah. know we say it's a fan reunion but we don't want to assume everybody that chimes in is uh familiar with you like that so yeah. just let's start from the beginning like where you're from where you grew up two-parent household stuff like that yeah i'm from down the street <laughs> i'm from memphis tennessee okay. specifically bartlett uh grew up uh grew up first you know, Kojic, you know, Church of God in Christ. Kojic, okay, I don't think uh -huh. I knew you grew up Kojic, okay. Mm-hmm, the first part of my childhood, and then we came to Breath of Life around when I was like nine, nine years Where old. Where you go to Kojic at? What, what church was Temple it? of Deliverance. Uh, uh, the G. Oh, G-E. Yeah. The goat. yeah, yeah, yeah. Green and Gold Church. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, it's always up there, man. Yeah. Yep, and I went to uh, Elmo Park Elementary, uh... Funny thing is, I grew up. I I wasn't, you know, thinking about singing like that. You know, I wanted to be an animator because I love cartoons. I love uh, Disney movies, and right. I I wanted to literally be the person like <laughs> paper in the pencil, and then the, you know how the paper uh they they like yeah. turn the pages and make the character move. I wanted to do that. Well, you sound so, like a prophet because I think you could probably still do that. Hey, if I yeah, can, I mean, I'm I've been drawn in a long time, but hey, I, I think I still got it. Um, yeah, so I grew up, went to Breath of Life. Uh, Started there at nine, right? You say you went mm -hmm. to, from Kojic to Breath, which is a non-denominational non yeah. at nine. Yeah, I got saved there at Breath of Life. Like, mm -hmm. found found clarity in my, in my faith and my religion there. Uh, grew up. Got the teen ministry with you guys, mm -hmm. and um, felt a strong a strong calling. I felt like something was irking me, something was bothering me all the time. So um, I just felt like some uh, the Lord was speaking to me, say you need to get up on the stage, and you need to sing. Now this was before high school. This was like seventh grade, eighth grade. And you are how old now? Right now? Yeah, right now. I'm thirty nine. 39, okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, all right, all right. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started singing in a praise team with Pastor Edward Slaughter and his wife. Um, she was a praise leader. Okay, and, hold, hold on for a minute. Let me, let, me, let me back up just a little bit because something intrigued me. Like, you just, did you have any prior singing before you felt the the... The unction, the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't just like, hey, Lord yeah. tell you, like, tell me, I'm like, yeah. what you mean getting on stage? Like, yeah, <laughs> let, let, let me back up a little bit. So my parents are musically inclined. Okay. So my dad plays, he would play the organ. So in addition to going to Temple of Deliverance, he would play at several churches okay. around town. So I pretty much grew up sitting behind him. He's on the organ, and I'm just sitting on the pew right, <laughs> behind right, him right. in the mother's board. Yeah. Uh, watching and playing my mom, as you know, yep. sings. Oh, for sure. Um, we know so, uh, and my dad started a little choir in his hometown. So when I was like mm. six, seven, I would be in the choir singing soprano. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. six, seven year old boy, that's right. the only type of voice you got. <laughs> right. right. So, uh, trying to sing tenor sometime. 
but you know, did you know you were like work. different though, as far as singing wise? Like you, like if me and you was in the choir together growing up, it'd be like, okay, JB, you can't yeah. sing, but like Marcus is like, <laughs> you can do something. Like you know, people would be like, hey, you can actually you know do a little something. Yeah, I could, I I sang, but it wasn't like I was just up there. Like I wasn't leading any song. I was just. Tagging along, type of thing. Man, you was better than us though, because I was in there. <laughs> yeah. You know, they only gave me the parts that was like, you know, like I had all the Kurt Franklin parts. You know what I'm saying? Like you the hype man. The crowd, yeah, I get the crowd hype. If it was a rap. Part, <laughs> I remember like, some of that. Yeah, like they was like, because a lot of times I was lip syncing when I'd be up there, because like I had the one like we be in practice, like Miss Cece would be like, hold up, stop, who is that? It's like it was me. <laughs> we were pretty I'm off. we were pretty strong but uh going going back to um my, my my musical upbringing so i did sing like here and there with my parents right okay um but i didn't give it that much thought if that makes sense mm -hmm. it was just something to do yeah but when i became like more of a teenager it was like guys you need to do this Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't. I didn't get what that was about at the time. It was just, you know, I didn't have any peace until I got up there. Now, I like to get into it. Was it like you heard like a voice, or was it just like a feeling? Like you just knew, like that's what I should be doing this. Because I know some people. We sat with Fro, you know, saying like he. I think he said he heard like a a voice or something. But then others, mm -hmm. Righteous Raymond was like she just kind of like knew, like it was that I kind of just knew. knew. I got you. That that, that inward piece that this is it so uh fast forward now and and I, while this was going on i'm in the band in middle school i'm playing the yeah. trumpet yeah. so as far as school's concerned i was more an instrumentalist instead of a vocalist mm -hmm. so i get to cordova high school that's where i went to <laughs> high school uh that was like when it was pretty much brand new mm -hmm. uh my my mom and i we go talk to the band Cause I'm, I'm just gonna transition in the high school band. Uh, it's very expensive. I can imagine. <laughs> so, <laughs> and my mom's like, "Do you want to do this? It's, a, it's quite expensive to do this." And I was like, "You know what, mom?" Referring back to my experience at church, because mm -hmm. I was really enjoying singing in the praise team at church. I felt like I was. Yeah. I felt I felt like, I was coming into my calling like this is that was it i didn't know what calling was at the time but i know and all i knew is when i was singing i was feeling like this is it mm. so i'm like you know what mom i want to sing she was surprised because like i said i would sing with them but it was just like yeah whatever yeah <laughs> it was whatever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i said i i i'd rather do chorus Cause I like singing the praise team. I want to try with chorus. He was like, "Oh, huh? yeah. I thought you wanted to play trumpet." I said, yeah. <laughs> "Right." I think I want to do chorus. So I get to in the choir, and uh, start to get my traction there. Uh, they have honor choir here in West Tennessee, the West Tennessee Honor Choir, All West. We call it. Mm -hmm. I made All West. You have to audition for it. You know learn some passages of passages of music and audition with that made it i didn't think i was at the time i didn't think i was like on that level but i made it mm -hmm. uh, and each year i would make it and the last year my senior year i made all state mm -hmm. so uh i'm like okay i, I like this I, I like singing i like the atmosphere of choir and so i said you know i want to major in music ed be a choir teacher so <clears throat> with you doing all this like your the more that you knew that this was your thing like how was your 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 work ethic like were you like okay this is my thing so let me just you know do whatever or were you like diligent and like working hard at your voice at your gift yeah. and doing stuff of that nature or did you just like you know it just came quote unquote natural as far as producing the sound it was of course, there was things I had to learn, but right. but for the most part, that was natural. Knowing my music mm. and being prepared—that's the hard work. Yeah. You know, learning your music. You know, learning your words, memorizing all that stuff. That's where I I tried to be as prepared as I could be. 
mm. and not fail. <laughs> yep. And not fail the class. Uh, and so uh, I, I really enjoyed it. So I went to college and not really. Now, I wanted to be a music teacher. So I went, I still wasn't thinking, oh, people, I like to sing, but people want to hear me sing like that, you know, yeah. on a major uh, level. So in the music ed program, you have to have a voice teacher. So you have to see her, see him or her once a week and have voice lessons of all music ed majors. So my voice teacher said, you know what? There's an opera that the opera de- that the voice department is putting on and we need one more person. Can you do it? I said, okay. <laughs> I like adventure. I like, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty curious person. I said, okay, I'll do it. Did it, fell in love with it. I love being on the stage, putting on the costumes, you know, the reaction from the audience. Uh, How old were you with this? You were in college, right? This is college. So this was, my first opera was my freshman year, Mm. the spring. Okay. Spring semester. Um, Johnny Skeeky, that's the name of it. It's an (laughs) Italian opera. Skeeky. And I, my, my part was very small. So it was like, so Pinalino, he was like a lawyer, a yeah. shiesty lawyer. He had like one line. Yeah. And the rest of the time I had to play a dead guy. The, uh, the uh, old uh, master of the house that just died. And the premise of the opera is every, everyone in his family is fighting over his money. But they needed a person to just lay there. <laughs> Because yeah. the people were going to start pulling on my body and whatever, and they needed them. I was a prop. Uh, but the whole process of rehearsing and being on the stage, that I said, I, I like this. Still not thinking, you know. It was going to go beyond that one. Yeah. I was going to say, even in the opera, like, the black guy dies first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was pretty much it. Uh, so, so you, with the, with the opera, so... I'm I'm intrigued about like your like environment because again you you live in Memphis, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. So this is Going not the uni- like this is at the University of Memphis. Universe, oh yes, University of Memphis. So this is not like this is not like we hooping or just like me growing up playing tennis. It ain't just like you know what I'm saying everybody. Yeah. Hey, Keenan, Shay, like hey, let's go to the tennis courts uh, this morning. You know, but although my boy uh, Keenan was getting up with me, we were going to run, you know, in the, back in, you know, the college days. So I salute him. He helped me with my training and stuff. Uh, but so it's just not coming, t- you know, although you were in, you know what I'm saying, the burbs a little bit. You said right. Bartlett, right? Yeah, right. Bartlett. Then we moved down the road to Cordova. So I, I was zoned to go to Cordova. Right. But so. I mean, but then, like, keep in mind, he went to church in South Memphis. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then in Raleigh, you yeah. know, Raleigh Frazier area. So it's like, He's not totally oh, removed no. from there. Because I remember it was times like when they first came to the church, like they used to come over, you know, to our crib. You mm, know what I'm saying? Okay. On Sundays mm-hmm. after church and eat. You know, my mom, you know, mom loved to cook. So like when they first joined and, you know, brother yeah. used to have a tens captain's ministry. Yeah. And like they were in my parents' group. Know, ten. Mm, okay. So like for their first yeah. few months at the church and that like that was how I got to know them because they would come over Sunday after church. So. Yeah, like you said, yeah. he was in the burbs, but wow. okay. he was still like he I'm coming still, out of the neighborhood. Like right, <laughs> I'm still surrounded by my community, yeah. uh, by way of church and family. You know, right. And so that was that's intriguing <laughs> to me because I was like I said, I was into summer tennis, which is a predominantly white sport. But as in you, my dad was was in tennis. He grew up in well, he lived in California and uh, started playing tennis back in the '70s. That's the the era of Arthur Ashe and all that stuff. Yeah, so he kind of yeah. caught that wave, and so. I never would have been even probably exposed to tennis if it wasn't for him and him, you know, getting us out and doing certain things like that. Yeah. But you, what it sounds like, you grew up in an environment of music, kind of like we had Mr. Andrew on here, grew up in an environment of music and everything else. And so, you know, in your in your world, you know what I'm saying, that was, you know, you weren't influenced necessarily by your peers. Did you get, like, you get checked and stuff, like, for being, like, a – a song boy or anything like that? Or was it like... No, because Cordova was really big. So mm. you get to choose who you hang around. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I wasn't... Okay. I was kind of... I was either in the choir room or the French club. I was kind of a nerd. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I wasn't around a whole bunch of people. 
Okay. Uh, as far as the choir room, everyone was real competitive. So yeah. as far as if it was anything negative, it was more like the pettiness and the competitiveness and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. I'm in the choir room, but even even that got checked by our teacher. You know, yeah. but we and we, we eventually worked out, worked that out. You know, we were a unit. Right. So. Um, okay. Because I was wondering, because you remember we had, um, you know, Jason Smith on the show. And, oh, yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. how he was growing up and he mm-hmm. was half white, half black. Yeah, and yeah. He in the mm-hmm. white station area. He was just like, right. you know, kind of getting rocky. And ch- like I said, people were calling me all the time Andre Agassi. You know what I'm saying? Are you, yeah. are you off the ash or something? Are you, you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. that's just, the, that was just the, the culture of the Memphis City Schools. And yeah. you, you, you know, create tough skin and learn how to check. Yeah. But as a product, yeah, I got put out of a couple of classes because yeah, we know I was that. checking the teachers. I was, uh, like I, I was checking my classmates, but I checked the teachers too. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I got suspended for doing math. We had a yeah. teacher, Mr. Freeman. That man had like fourteen goals. Man, he said fourteen was, goals. Yeah, he had fourteen. He was an easy target. It's like <laughs> yeah, just, I, it's like we never like people who didn't understand what the singers were doing. We never were. a Around, around them, that's you know, good. you know, that's good. And Cordova, yeah. I don't know how your schools were, but Cordova's were real, not just racially segregated, you know, in the lunchroom, mm-hmm. but we were segregated by the stuff that we were into, the cliques, like and the clubs and stuff. The choir was mm-hmm. over here, or the people in English, you know, that like to read and what they were over right. there, and the French students were over there, and the jocks were over there, the chilies were over there, so. It was a little bit different. I remember, like, but that, the the lunch room was where everybody came together. Right. So if I wanted to check a, a nerd, we go to the nerd table. Yeah. We go over to the the uh, we had we had the show choir at Craigmont. So you go to the show uh-huh. choir and stuff like that. So I was wondering because like I know the peer pressure and stuff can deter you away. Are you second second uh, have a second thoughts about you know what you knew was your you know your gift, your your calling, yeah. which you didn't know at that time. So I was just wondering, did you have any type of uh, resistance in giving it sound like you didn't? So that kind of mm-hmm. okay, that's cool. That's cool. No, th- thankfully, no, I didn't. Um, mm-mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. So um, so you get the you're you're we're about your freshman year. You do your first opera. Yeah. Uh, you get your first opportunity, right? Yeah, you get your first opportunity as a freshman, and then you ended up killing it, right? You can you killed it, you killed it. Just say you killed it. Just so it. yeah, playing the dead guy was great. You killed it. <laughs> it was great. You killed it. And, and um, they want you back. But as as the school, my schooling went on, my teachers uh, forced me to do competitions, vocal competitions. So. Uh, there was one competition called the Metropolitan Opera National Council Auditions, which is not an it's not really an audition. It's more of a competition. Mm-hmm. I had no idea what that was, but my voice teacher was like, "Oh, you know, you should do this." That's the way she said it. Mm-hmm. So I took it. Oh, I should do it. I probably won't do it. <laughs> I'm gonna stay in the bed on Saturday. Yeah. So the Saturday rolls around. I get a call. She's like, get your butt down here at this school. It's your teacher. Yeah. Okay. I'm White like, teacher. Mm-hmm. Get your butt down here. And I'm like, what? Why? You were signed up for this competition. I'm like. She just signed you up all willy-nilly. Huh? I was like, okay. God. Mm. So I had to rush, put on clothes, run down to university, sing my two arias, which is songs from operas. Mm-hmm. I win the, encor- the I win the encouragement award. So I'm like, oh, wow! <laughs> I've never won anything in my life. <laughs> What's that? What's like the encouragement award? Like it's like uh, they have places first, second, third, and then encouragement. Okay. So you get money. Oh, okay. <laughs> ding, at the time, <laughs> nothing wrong with this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. At the time, it was five hundred. Back back in the two thousands, five hundred was for encouragement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for encouragement, yeah. uh-huh. you didn't get the first three places, and you got five hundred. Yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot back in the two thousands. I got some tickets to a show. I ain't get no money. <laughs> it's like, I, I can, bill. I can you do know, good I'm sorry enough. for this stand bill, but no stand bill. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all would have had to seen the episode, but yeah, I got some tickets. I ain't get no money. And the people who judge are from the bigger industry, so these are the people who are judging you and saying you have something. 
that the you have something to pay yeah. attention to. You have a talent. You have a gift. Yeah. So if the people competing were like you, the only black guy in it. In general. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> in, in, <laughs> in general. Right. That's usually how it is. Okay. Right. Right. If right. I'm not the only one, I'm not one of two. I'm one of three. Okay. So let's, so let us let me let me get into that for a minute I'll, as well because I like the, the the a little bit of the back and forth when it comes to that like also being in tennis being the only black face on yeah. most you know times traveling stuff like that you get you know what I'm saying some jealousy some hate I can mm-hmm. I can't name you know how many times I got called nigga on the court on the wow. court during a match actually TSU I don't know if, I don't know if Kenan was there, but we actually was jumping somebody. They called one of my teammates something on the court. It was just uh, a foreign team, and through the rackets, we had it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, those being in that type of environment, in that culture, you being kind of the only black person in the industry, did you run in, in any type of um, issues with issues, just stuff you heard, rumors, kickback, jealousy, hate? In that world, in this, in the world of classical music, it's it's, uh, what's it called? Um, microaggressions. It's a lot of that. Mm. So instead of them saying that outright, it's mm. the way they speak to you. It's it's, mm. it's the condescension, demeaning type yeah. of yeah. It's that type of thing that you walk into a room and they think that you don't know what you're doing. That type of stuff. Mm. Uh, Fast forward, I did an audition for an agent in New York about two years ago, and he told me I didn't. He didn't even let me finish. He was like, "You know, why don't you just uh, do your own put on put on your own program of spirituals? Spirituals meaning that's that's the one. That's your line. Yeah, <laughs> you know they, that's the black oriented part of classical music. Yeah. Why don't you just do that?" And you, and it's, it's so that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. as if I, that's the only thing I can do, which is not. Wow. <laughs> yeah, of course so, we know that. We know that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a lot of that. Uh, cold shoulder. You 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 know it when you when you, you witness do? it. The yeah. cold shoulder, like you greet that person yeah. with the uh, and then when you come to me, it's like. Oh, JB. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, what up, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> now, we're in corporate America. Like, that's me and Keenan was kind of talking about that kind of before, like, before we got on. Like, as far as it's how, very being similar. in corporate, it's the it's the unsaid things, it's the body language, it's the language. demeaning type of, you know what I'm saying, posture. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, how do you deal with that? I'm, I'm, this is the part where I'm, I'm grateful for both my parents, actually. Uh, my and my grandparents, uh, I believe they instilled in me from a small child. My mom would tell me stories about my grandfather. My grandfather, Robert Rice, uh, mm. he owned a car. Uh, he, he fixed cars. He had his own car shop. and start, starts with Mississippi, mm. in the heart of the Deep South, yep. and his clientele was mixed, both black and white people and he had built a name for himself and he would cuss out the black people he would cuss out the white people when they didn't try to pay him <laughs> like he was right. he had no fear like he and this was back in the 50s and the 60s mm-hmm. like he, he felt like he could do whatever he wanted to do and, and that's bold back then he was very bold <laughs> yeah, un, yeah. Un, unusually bold and uh he, he instilled that in his kids mm. and my mom has that boldness and she mm-hmm. and my dad too mm-hmm. uh, and they would just tell me and my sisters you can do whatever you want to do yes the world is like this yes you you, you have to contend with 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 folks that feel like they're better than you but know who you are in Christ first mm-hmm. and know where you come from you can do anything you want to uh and and the way they moved around in the world, they were never afraid. My parents were never afraid to walk into certain spaces because they always felt like they had every right to be there. Mm-hmm. So that's that's one of the things that I appreciate about my parents. So growing up, um, and I run into silly folks <laughs> that like to mm-hmm. uh, that like to uh, 
spew their ignorance. I just said, I shake my head. You know, that's all I can do is shake my head at them. Like, you never had to smack nobody, Marcus. Like, you never like you like yo, you know what I'm saying? Right. Is Marcus <laughs> King gonna have to slap me? Like, am I gonna have um, to? I mean, that was not. What, what a that slap never had yeah. to smack anyone. I did have to go to uh, higher ups on people. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I said I, that'll probably hurt hurt him more than just me smacking them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That smack can feel good sometimes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, That's, but it, it but got the point it. across. Yeah, Man, you said uh, your yeah. grandfather, and we were talking about this off camera because of. So you like you have a very famous, extremely famous. <laughs> uh, he said the last name too. You know, right? You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so, like, and I and I remember, you know, when I found it out, and I I think it might have been, I can't remember which sister it was, but like had posted a picture. I think it was Melanie. You know what I'm saying, yeah, right? She, she posted it, right? Yeah. Um, it but I mean, like, like all of y'all yeah. wasn't. It wasn't like a secret. You know what I'm saying? But right. like, you know, some of y'all are more vocal than others about it. But like, and, and you you already know who you know already know who who my yes. team is, right? <laughs> um, and you and you know you you you're as well. But like, um, so like you are actually blood related, like not the way black people say it. Not yeah. you know, not, not a country not cousin, like, cousin. Yeah. right, right. Like he's... you are actually related to uh, Jerry Rice. Yes, yes. Um, That's crazy. He's my mom's second cousin, because my grandfather and his father are first cousins. Oh, if okay, that makes okay. sense. <laughs> they yeah. all grew up together down in Mississippi. Right. So my grandfather and his father were also like best friends, mm. and my grandmother and and his mother. We're like best friends, so they're over at my 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 folks' house every weekend. You know, mm-hmm. down there they they cook a huge a huge meal. They're there, or they go over to uh, Jerry's Jerry's folks' house, and they all just grew up together. So they grew up like siblings almost. So this is somebody that you can actually probably see, and they'll be like, "Hey, I know you." Yeah, you know, not just be like, "They know my." He knows my mom. Cause yeah. I, I I see him, but you right. know I don't really hang out with her. But you know, well, you gotta hang mom. out. But your mom extension for you, so it's, yeah, it's all the same. Yeah. So yeah. I think the last time I saw him was last year, last fall at his sister's funeral. Yeah. Uh, his sister his sister passed away of cancer. So uh, down in Mississippi, the family met down there, and uh, that was the last time I saw him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The goat. Yeah. That's the goat. I can't. Even, I can't. You know, I'm a cowboy fan, so you know I can't. I, I can't, you can't hate on greatness. Yeah, yeah, no, no. You can't hate on greatness. You know, and even they're, though I and like they're very Lerner. good at cooking too. It was, it was food galore. <laughs> I can imagine, <laughs> like Man, two weeks know. worth of food. The fat like, back, the chit. Did you work eating chitlins? They didn't have chitlins at, at nah, the. I ain't had no that chitlins. Thing. Huh? Uh, Not the chitlins. Uh, uh-uh. uh. But but it ain't no. It wasn't no repast food. I put to you that. <laughs> wasn't no repast. <laughs> uh, uh-uh. uh. They they feed you well down there. And they try to stuff you. <laughs> Man, I already know. Okay, so all right, so we know you you've been killing all these competitions. You got the encouragement award, mm-hmm. and what a what a encouragement to get five hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, know you wasn't even trying to go; like you was trying to be sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's an encouragement. Oh, so I can get paid doing this, and I just got an encouragement. Yeah, that like, was like what the, if I the, can get the, the first light place? bulb. That was the light bulb moment for me. And what like, year was this? This was probably like in. The- so I had to. This is my undergrad. So I, my yeah. undergrad lasted five years. So this is like the third year. So it was like sophomore. So it's probably like oh five, oh four, oh five or something. Mm-hmm. Yep. Five huh, hundred. Hmm. Yeah, that was that was. Oh, that, was, that lasted. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I can, needed it. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So you getting all this, the encouragement award, killing these competitions, and you actually now I'm assuming you can correct me if I'm wrong. Now you're getting confirmation of what you always felt years prior like this is what this is what i can do this is what i want to do what i'm I'm put on there because if you recall our youth group would constantly uh, and I, I said something about rag and yeah. i and i was crowned yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. now he's still he's still ahead yeah. on the channel yeah. he's still ahead now i ain't gonna say yeah. no yeah. Hey, um it was the the constant uh, focus on purpose and and what is your calling, like just what what do you put on this earth to do? Yeah. And and 
hearing that so much in church. Yep. That was that was circulating in my head. But I, I didn't put the pieces of the puzzle together until I got to college. I'm like, this is it. This is it. The the year after I won the encouragement award, I won first place. Mm. And then I won first place again mm. my senior year. <laughs> Mm. So, yep. so they encourage you right into the top five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. They asked me to come back for my master's. So I, I did that. So I can go ahead and get it out the way. Mm. So when I'm done, I'm done. It's best to go straight off because yeah. that, that lie you tell yourself, well, I'm going to go back after a year or two. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Too hard to go back. It is, bro. Um, so, yeah. Uh, where I lost my train of thought. Like you said, you were talking about they asked you to come back uh, for your mm-hmm. master's. I did that. 2010, I graduate. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, after that, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to get an agent. I'm going to just... Whoosh. Didn't happen that way. It was like crickets. Now, I'm I'm a novice to the game, so this is kind of like... I know people that's in California, that even Quinn is. He's in the modeling and acting and stuff. And so I know about agent in that. So it's the same way with Pretty music. Pretty much the same and thing. Op- you know, with singing, like they can. Where they get you work. Get plug you, get you in it. commercials, uh, ad yeah. spot or something like that. Okay. It's, okay. Pre- it's pretty much the same thing. We're all in the same world, actually. Yeah. Pretty oh. much, like, circulating. Because, mm. uh, but my 2010, 2011, Nothing. So I had to even move back in with my parents because I was I was having trouble finding a teaching job. Yeah. So I started subbing. So I did that for a year. I didn't get a music teaching job until 20, uh, 2012. No, 2011, fall 2011. Mm-hmm. So I kind of, I was discouraged. I got. I pretty much put it out of my head hmm. about being a opera singer. I just. I'll just be a teacher, music teacher, start a good program, yeah. help the youth, go about my business. Did you get an agent though? Did you get it? Did mm-hmm. you happen to get an agent though when you mm-hmm. were trying? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. Because I didn't have any. The crazy thing is. Agents want you to have experience. I know, right? <laughs> like that's why I'm coming to you. But how so can you I get experience? experience when yeah, you get experience. Right? Yeah, it's the same thing. Like yeah. when you get your degree, you Man, got a degree, but you I can't know. get a job because you don't have the experience. But the person who didn't go get the degree, scam. You know what I'm saying? It's like it okay, well, you got the experience, and but you, you don't have a degree, and you paying all this on right. this debt. And then yep. once you get both of them, then you're overqualified. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's that's, that, that's the same thing with me. Yeah. Uh, yep. But uh, going back to U of M, the jazz instructor, somebody who I never took from, calls me up and says he and his wife, who's a pianist, she needs um, a singer to go with her to Nashville. It's her audition for a piano. She's going to. She wants to do a program in Austria. Uh, but they need a singer to measure how well she can accompany a mm. vocalist. So I say, I'll do it. And they say, you never know what will happen. They may take you too. I will say, okay. I go up there to Nashville. She does her audition. Kill they it. take her and they ask me to come. And mm. they say, we'll pay you, pay your, Everything. we'll pay your tuition full ride. And I said, Sure. I will go. Man he said, sure. <laughs> sure. <I'll go. laughs> Playing the cool, like yeah, yeah, you know, I ain't uh, always, yeah. always. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. That's 2012. Okay. So summer 2012, I'm in Austria, singing around, studying, uh, getting, having eyeballs put on me, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, from that, I get an offer the following year to sing in England. So 2013, I did. I'm still teaching, by the way, during the school year. Mm-hmm. But summer times, I'm singing. I'm going right. away singing. Right. 2013, I, I sing in England. They invited me back. 2014, uh, mm. the opera here, the opera company here in Memphis, they were starting to hear about the things I'm doing. Mm-hmm. 
started asking me to do stuff with them. I do a lot of things with them. Even now, we just finished the Falling in the Rising. Um, and this is all this stuff paid, right? Yeah, this is so paid. You, okay, paid. I just want to be so you're going away for the summer. You just ain't doing no singing yeah. and just saying you getting you getting mucho dinero. Yeah, it's not like right. an internship. <laughs> yeah, you're not right. Just like you now know the what first saying? one was more like an internship. For the, sure, the, yeah, the yeah. Austrian one, but yeah. the other one too were gigs. Yeah, um, mm. I've been I've been to Japan. Yeah, um, now this was a group out of New York called the Glory Gospel Singers, but they wanted a class. They wanted classic trained singers to join them. Mm-hmm. So I've been. I did a. We did a tour of Japan for a month in 2014. Uh, where else have I been to Italy? Studied. Did some study there. Uh, How's the food in Italy? Like I've been hearing like different, different stuff. Man, in real Italy. It's just That's what it's I've delicious. It's you know, delicious. You, you okay. get sick of pasta. Okay. You get. I. I I'm a sick of pasta. Yes. Okay. I, by the they time I came, uh, I guess that I had horse meat though. Horse meat is delicious. Horse meat. Horse meat wow. is delicious. Like yes. Seasoned like seasoned. Like, yes. I'm assuming. It's, it's, what it tastes like. It's like chicken. Meat, no. Probably. <laughs> it's it's closer to uh. Prosciutto, if you had that, yeah, oh, it was like okay, that. Yeah. It was like thin slice, but right. they serve it up with like cheese and and like interesting. Okay, but the chicken is real fresh. Yeah. It's like they just like <laughs> right, they like cooked it that morning. Right. Yeah. It they is call so it farm fresh. Table. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, like yeah, farm table. table. Yeah. It's that kind yeah. of. That's <clears> the thing about your everything. The food is so fresh. I, I really okay. I, okay. I, I love I love eating the food because it's like fresh out the barn yeah. <laughs> type of food. Um, so you had those experiences. You so had, like, what about now? Man. I want to know so because, we, you know, I, I can eat. <laughs> so like, you know, you can eat. Oh yeah. I always got to do it. <laughs> um, so like of all the places you've be, been, like, who would you say has like the best food, like England, Japan, Austria. And for people who don't know Austria, that's kind of close to like Germany, right? In that area, yeah, they used to be one thing, right? Exactly. And then they broke apart. Mm-hmm. What the most delicious food is England. Mm. I mean, where I was, they had a private chef. So oh, okay, okay. He oh, worked now, and he, the private chef. He worked in Buckingham Palace. Oh, okay. so he knew what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, got to <laughs> because that was a part of the deal. We get free lunch and dinner. They and this chef would prepare it every day, and I'm like, oh wow, he he would yeah. have a spread every day. I'm like, this right here is worth doing this. Yeah, <laughs> a whole spread, a whole buffet. He brings some, bring some Tupperware. Let me take some of these back. And take we did it too. <laughs> And we did yes. too. A bunch of young, I sure tried. young start starting out musicians. Yeah, you better believe we <laughs> stuffed food in our backpacks and yeah. everything. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I would say England okay. would wow. be from from my experience. Italy is great, but like I said, after a month you get yeah, sick. Yeah, pasta, of, pasta with everything. You get sick of pasta. <laughs> So, with you being a world traveler and doing what you love to do, did that, um, how did that uh, develop your, like, perspective coming back here to Memphis? Like, you look at things a little bit more different as far as how things work, or as far as, because <clears throat> I'm assuming you've been there for, like, two or three months straight in different countries. Like, you have to somewhat be ingrained into their society, the their culture, and stuff like yeah. that. I would say I'm 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 grateful for the experience to travel abroad cuz I feel like it 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 gives you a perspective that your way isn't the only way mm-hmm. I would say that the way you do things isn't the only way to do things or the way you think is the only way to think you know mm-hmm. uh, with that being tempered by what you know about, you know, the Lord and the word of God and all those things that, that temp that you, you put everything through a filter, of course. Yeah. But, um, it just broadens your perspective. It makes you not be so 
judgmental. Yeah. I would say, because the world is so big. Yeah. And it's so many different kinds of people in the world. And my job is to touch and, and to bless all different kinds of people. You know, and it's not my it's not up to me to say, Oh, well, I'll sing for this person or I won't sing for that person. That's not yeah. up to me. That's up to him, you know. And I go where he where he's where he says I can go. So uh um, you've seen the difference I'm sorry to interrupt you, but like the difference. A lot of people say this is westernized Christianity over here. Mm-hmm. Right? And so have yep. you seen the some something different than what being such a broad, you've been to you know a lot of different, other different countries, of, so you've seen different types. I'm assuming denominations how and stuff. Well, like denomination, well, Christianity, pure. How you know believers, how they operate. I mean, correct me. I don't know if you have or not over abroad. So I'm just assuming because even I've, here, like I, I seen a different denomination type of churches here. Yeah. So I just see how people worship differently. Yeah. Um, but like I said. As long as you your foundation in the word is is solid, you're confident in that you can you can go attend another type of service and not you know feel away and not I'm not uncomfortable you All know right. I can be comfortable in various settings um, and not pass not be judgmental not pass judgment because at the end of the day uh, he knows right. <laughs> he knows he he is the truth yeah. so none of us are. 100% correct on any of this. <laughs> None of us yeah. know it all. all right. So we'll, we'll know once he tells us. <laughs> right. <laughs> One day. I'm going to go all the way to the left. Um, so. <laughs> what? <laughs> Me, say <something> crazy. <laughs> go ahead. Not red. No. Uh, so like, and you know, I, I, I kind of, I, I know this kind of on both sides of it, having done gospel and secular but like the crazy thing is like you would be surprised doing gospel like it's it's a lot of groupies and you would think because i'm praising the lord like that doesn't and, and if i'm lying i'm that like like Stuart can tell you you know what i'm saying he know from the times we've been out of town Vic can tell you, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you're saying the panties gonna fly. Anyway. I mean, and we're we're yeah. not even on that. Like we just got through <laughs> doing an <the> invitation. <laughs> like we just real live, like it don't matter. And, and you know, I'm I'm a seminary graduate, so I wasn't just giving a scripture, like I'm breaking down <laughs> Hebrews 12, 5 on stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm doing this, and then afterwards, like they be like, you know, what you want. Obviously, you know, being a second side, it's not that difficult because Essentially, you walk in the building knowing that's what people on anyway. Let's go. Um, doing what you're doing. Um, have you encountered? Is that like? Cause, cause I don't, I don't know. E- even in the singing genre, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. opera is different. Like, that's its own. It's, a, it's almost like an elite type of thing. Would you is. say they can I would, still be crazy you know over what I'm there? Saying? That's so why like, I look at that's it. That's something yeah, that, that yeah. you've encountered or that you've had to see people deal with. Uh huh. You have people approaching you with with after the show, trying to invite you to their house and oh, like, well. no, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, and then cast members, oh, okay, right, right, getting together, right. Yeah, I had a had a little girlfriend over in England, <laughs> oh, but well. but uh, we didn't. But it's at the end, she was like. So, area code, but she's from well, from Australia, so we oh, had okay. to Skype yeah. every day, and that that got yeah, that, stale. That, gonna do that. Yeah, that yeah, got stale yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I mean, so do you find it hard because you talked a lot about um, your faith and just in, in conversations that we've had on and off camera? Um, that's something that you, you're very solid on. You know, it's not just a it, it's it's not just a religion you know, for you, like you actually have a relationship. Yeah. And so is, is it difficult to maintain your walk and still be in some of these environments where it's like, it's, it's being thrown mm-hmm. at you. And you know, sometimes like, you know, you, you may, you may want like some temptation look better than others. You know right. what I'm saying? It does. But, but is it, is it difficult for you to maintain that? Like what, what keeps you on that path? Literally sometimes I just had to get by myself. Sometimes I just have to separate from the group. 
If I'm not in rehearsal, I'm in my yeah, room. <laughs> I'm in my room. Plus, it's and plus, what makes it easy because some of the people can be kind of irritating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I want to separate for that reason, yeah. and then it keeps me out of trouble too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I. Because you got every reason. I mean, you ain't married. Are you, mm -mm. you, you single, right? You single. Yeah. yeah. So you, you ain't like, ain't nothing holding you. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, you know, I you remember. Know what I'm saying he ain't like you don't have any kids, do you? Uh uh. Right. So he ain't paying no child support or nothing like that. I mean, no, so he can support. I mean, I wouldn't say he's trying to shoot the club up or nothing, but like you know, he, <laughs> <laughs> he can. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like he he has nothing. Like oh, right. I don't need no more kids. Yeah, like, man. You know, he ain't lit well. You can't have no more. I'm done. Like, yeah, I may. I'm I'm done. Done. You know what I'm saying? He ain't like me. Like, you know, it's. I pass it over know, to yeah. Vic, and then maybe if Kenny wants some of the sauce too, you know, I can. <laughs> I, and like I said, I'm. Boomerang it over there the for a minute. I'll never be out the game. You know what I'm saying? I'm, ne I'm always. I like. Uh, I had a player I used to coach, and his nickname was ITG in the gym. As long as he was in the gym, he was in range. Like, I'm always in range. I ain't never, I'm never out the game. Well, you 80 know, years old, I'm still in there. You're not going to stop yeah. practicing. You know, and I, I'm just saying, yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna stop producing. So it's like, <laughs> oh, see, uh, I'm good. Yeah. I'm at four, bro. Nah, man, I'm yeah. good. I'm good. Like it's, it's, it's legacy, man. You you don't you know. Yeah. When you leave here, that money you I, I've never seen a Brink truck fall in the hearse. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, like, right, like, right, for real. right. Like I didn't see no niggas lie. like no lie. That, and they put jewelry in the casket and stuff like that, and then somebody like dig the grave up and steal it and steal all the jewelry, the chains off, like because you can't take none of that. Like you. what's wrong with that? Right, right. But, like, exactly. <laughs> what, you can't what's wrong with it? Exactly. What, you, what you gonna do? I'm gonna get more shine out of this ring oh, than man, you will. Man, look. But I mean, no, nah, like, but seriously though, like, so you you said you get by yourself. Is that more? Um, cause we, and we actually talked about this mm. uh, the other day when it was just me and you on here. Mm. Episode coming soon, by the way. Yep. I'm um, it, it's a difference in being committed or celibate or whatever you want to call it by choice or by. And I made a joke like it, it ain't hard to be celibate when you you know what I'm saying the opportunity ain't nobody ain't around. Like, I, I don't like you. I don't want you. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't good temptation. Oh, this don't you know nobody so like, come to see you. Oh, yeah, this. like ain't nobody come to see you. Like if the house catch on fire, like I can't carry you out of here. Like no, you ain't good temptation. Yeah, you know yeah. What I I'm can't saying? say but, I've been perfect all the time. Right. I say of that. course not. Hey, hey, come but, on now. Hey, that that I mean, that is that that is not the case. Yeah, the perfect. We ain't talking about but, that. Um, Right, you're not like King and Stewart. Yeah, not like King. Oh. I, I tried. Oh, to get no, no, that man yeah. made it all the way. I tried that to get King in some booty to multiple bench, times man. at TSU. He man, all man. the time he hung around me, we smoking, no. drinking. Hey, I got this little junk. Come over here, really Keenan. So, like, no, he did not believe no. because, like, so he, he he and I were roommates at one point, right? <laughs> so like, the King, like, man, we talking about being the dogs. Yeah, like, yeah, we was roommates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, but he didn't understand. And keep in mind, I think for a while at one point, like we both were prank, we both were being celibate, right? But he yeah. didn't understand, like, man, he would date, man, he always dated a baddie, right? Yeah. yeah he yeah. always was with a bad one, but he LeBron. didn't understand, right? Golden State, Carpet. Yeah. Oh, we had we had nicknames for him too, ah, so ah. we could have a conversation around people <laughs> and they not know who we was talking about. So like we said like Carmelo like Carmelo was a certain person so they thought we were talking about basketball. You talking about? We were talking about like hey, talking about shit, right? I wouldn't be laughing yeah. if it was real, man. That's what I'm saying. He know. And so real. like we had Carmelo, we had LeBron, we had Golden State. Like we we had different I, I, names I, I, for different people. I, I, and they're like, man, they always talking about basketball. No, I would have been cracking. We were talking about y'all. Y'all just didn't know. I yeah. would have gave him giving you away. I would uh, crack up on stuff. But so like that. he didn't understand yeah. like because he made it all the way till he got married. He didn't do nothing until he got married but he didn't understand like the relationship be going good the chick will break up with him and then he and he thought like oh we just not but i'm like nigga y'all talking the phone every day you taking her out on these dates like when her friends see you her friends is like oh girl like they excited you know what i'm saying you got a good job you got a good head on your shoulder you got a relationship with god i'm like dude they breaking up with you because you not you not giving up the d and he just couldn't believe it. And then I said, man, he had a couple of them. I'm like, okay, how come as soon as she break up with you, four months later, she pregnant? The next nigga that she didn't got with, so obviously she wasn't trying to be celibate because you was trying. She was doing that. And, like, a lot of people will say that, like, oh, I'm looking for somebody who it ain't all about that. And then they get somebody, like, 
what he was doing or somebody who yeah. uh is doing what where you what you what you try to do. Yeah. Uh what I, I'm doing now for I would say I would say the last couple of weeks has been more so because the real commitment is. I ain't said a couple of weeks. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Hey, no, hey, no, I ain't with you. No, with re- you. no, remember I said a few weeks ago I said it had been a few weeks, but I was like it wasn't because I was choosing to be. I got. I was yeah, saying yeah, it was right. just because I didn't like the opportunities. Right, right, right. right like right. now it's like you know, like okay, I really just am not. Because even it. before I came over here today, like like I was I was praying today you know what i'm saying mm. but it's like and, and, and i'm not even gonna lie like yeah i want to obey god but at the same time like again if megan good break up with jonathan majors i'm sorry <laughs> like it's, it's just it is what it is right, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm just i i know my i know me right for sure you know what i'm saying yeah. but um I, I i get uh i've dated a couple of sopranos uh one that just from here uh, she was. I'm sorry, uh, my mind just went somewhere else when you said Soprano. No, no. I was no. like, dang, he dated Tony Soprano. <laughs> no, but I got you. I'm with you. Well, those kind of no, 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 no. No, I'm just thinking of the the voices. You know, oh, Sopranos, okay. the voices and stuff like that. So, oh, go, go ahead. <laughs> you are just a nasty boy. Wow. Hey, I was just. Hey, okay. He's Randy. King. Wow. Well, <laughs> he's absolutely Randy. And, and to your point, oh, yeah. uh, she was. She grew up Kojic. She's like. She actually. The 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 habit. All that stuff, the nun with that all yeah. white, the things she was studying to be one of those, but she also likes to wear uh, nice clothes, bur- burlesque, fishnet, that stuff all oh, down on her right. Facebook. Yeah. You know, right, right, right. she would send me pretty Ricky songs okay. about <laughs> not the pretty Ricky, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's big yeah. right there. They can't say that the whole time, <laughs> right with yeah. me. he's back. <laughs> not, not that song. It was the other song she was saying. Yeah, we know Pretty Ricky. Oh. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like, okay, who? Which? Who are you? Yeah. Yeah, which one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay. And then she'll like switch over back to the nun. Right. <laughs> like, which one? Yeah. Which one do you want to be? <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. It's difficult. And, and dude, like, Stuart could tell you because <clears throat> he was around when I was, you know, passionate to Christ Roche, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I had, don't do that. You better than that. That's, he, he, better than that. But he knows. Yeah, he, 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 like, he like, remember like, like I was not Christ. doing in like, and if I'm I'm a all or nothing type of person, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't believe yeah. in okay. I'm not I'm a not have sex with somebody, but I'm jacking off every day. Like I might as well go if I'm gonna do it at that clip. You might as well go on in. See, you know what I'm saying? Do we've it. had we had conversations right. about like, this. Right, like I said, like I, you yeah, might no. as well go on and do it. Like you're you're not finna get a pass. Like oh okay, well it was, you was just doing you, so you're no you gonna Which get one the same. Is healthier? But that's but that's but that's, made, but that's how you got in trouble right. though. The per the person who may only do it one time a year, the way God look at you in the same boat as the person who playing with themselves every day. It's true. So like but I'm gonna be a it's safe for me to get a beat a, all by myself all the way over here, right? Oh, I ain't never in trouble. I I am um. All the way over here, but it would be like I'd have women that I would date, like how you said, and I'm not gonna say no names, but <laughs> I had one chick I dated, and she was a like real, you know, I would say you, you would consider her like holy love the Lord and everything like that. And I didn't, I was not, I'm on whatever you want. You want to be celibate till you get married, like let's go. You know what I'm saying? But it's times we'd be over there, you know, kicking it. You fall asleep, you know, I wake up and you got your whole face in my lap. We supposed to be practicing celibacy. So obviously when I wake up. You just move out the way, you right? Know what I'm saying? Move no, out the way. No, man. I'm not moving. Move out the way. I'm, like I'm waking up. Oh, okay. On, you want yeah, this work? Up. You finna get all this action. <laughs> yeah. But then but then check this out. The crazy thing was though, I get hit with the uh so afterwards now again, I you know, I get up, I get in the shower, whatever. I pray every day. So just got through, but I'm like, you know what, Lord, forgive me. I'm not you know, doing, I'm not being obedient. I get out the shower. She's like, uh, you need to check your relationship with the Lord. Nigga, what? <laughs> I didn't, t- I was over here minding my own business. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And so now you're, because you don't feel it. So it's like, I almost like you, and, and don't get me wrong. I got to own up for what my own part in it, but it's like, Again, when you're trying to do that, and a lot of people don't understand that because it's it's good, it's cliche to say that. Oh, I want a guy that's on that. Uh, like we're fathers, mm-hmm. we would like to think that we got daughters. 
But and I'm I'm closer to it than he is. But and people ask me like, man, you say that to your daughter, yeah, because I know she's at that age. Like whether I want it to happen or not, if she want to do that at some point, and the more you try to force them not to, they're gonna find a way. So it's like you they know what, do it more exactly. At least let me keep it a hundred with you, so you know what's going on. Because I don't want you to. It's better for you to know yep. than be a fool and ignorant. So. We would like to think our daughters are not going to be doing it, but but at some point, because we was there, it's going to happen. Yeah. Yep. You know, so it sounds good to say, oh, I want to live right, I want to do this, I want to do that. But then, again, behind closed doors, I was dating another chick, and Keenan and JB both know who this chick is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hold another good. conversation. But, like, again, do you want to live right. So we kicking it. We watching the movie. Watching. It. Okay, it's getting it late. You need to roll. Oh, I don't want to leave. It's one. Ain't, ain't what, nothing what good gonna happen. At, at, you know one, what I'm saying? Like you, you need to be. Oh, I'm not ready to go. Yeah. So we go all the way up until the point, and and I'm I'm a big foreplay guy. You know what I'm saying? So you let me put, oh, no, I'm just saying. You let me put my whole face in. And then, but then now when it when it comes time when it comes time when it comes time, like, okay, now we we back and then it's like, oh, we shouldn't be doing this. When? So you was cool over here. You were cool That's, over that was the girl I was dating. You see what I'm saying? But then it when it gets time now I didn't whipped it out. Now you're like, oh, we need to we need to obey the Lord. It's that's like exactly. you know what I'm saying. Like what kind of <laughs> yes. like yes. that's, even crowd looked at me like she got you more than one shade. That's your bad. You're right. Yeah. You're right, Vic. It was my bad. Like given you know, like I, honestly, I, I got a couple of my still partners that still are still officially single. You know, him being you know obviously one of them, but then B Howard and McDade. You know, well McDade not too much longer. Yeah, single, I was gonna but. say McDade is always single but not single. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll be McDade still. is just not married. McDade yeah. always got somebody in Yeah, it, it, it'll be soon. But I don't envy anybody that's in the dating game like out here now. Just because it's 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 real easy. It seems like to, you know, if, if if that's your flavor, if that's what you want to do, it's right there for the taking. And I and I think the question oh, he put out there was like, but it's like it got to be hard. You know what I'm saying? I mean, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, what does this I'm just, I'm, right. you know what right. I'm saying? But I'm just like, it, it, it has to be because, I mean, you're traveling abroad. I think you're about to go to New York here too. I think you posted something about this that week. soon. Carnegie Hall. No, and mm-hmm. Don't get it twisted. Like this nigga, like if you knew him when we was growing up, like he didn't lose it hide and seek. Because he could hide behind anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Small. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight up and down. Like, yeah. this nigga be in the gym. He be lifting. A lot. He be lifting. I did that because I'm a baritone. And in the world I'm in, the, that's the that character type is usually the uh, the, the bully, the athletic person, the the, he, the soldier. Um, okay. You know, and I had to, you know what? I, I need my look to match my voice. You know what I'm saying? He's more wow. muscular than everybody in this room right now. I'm, I'm, I honestly didn't know that, but that's cool to know. Yeah, yeah. that's cool to yeah. know. Okay. And then the tenor, he's usually more. There are heroic tenors, but he, he's usually like like the pretty boy, you know? right? Whereas the baritone is like the the enemy of the tenor. Yeah. So he's like you like Gaston and Beauty of the Beast. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Per- that's the character type of most baritone roles in opera. They not so not as bad as Gaston. Yeah. But. <laughs> it just yeah. it just got to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, do, do you believe it's it's tough nowadays? Probably. You know what I'm saying? And given yes. what's all you know out there, and like you would say it ain't gonna be perfect. And you know, whatever we we it we is. know, ain't none of us perfect. We all still in the process. But you know, just given out here in the world, given like I said, you're you're out there, you're going abroad, you're doing different stuff, you're single, you know what I'm saying? It's, you, it's out there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's out there. And um, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I, I, I succumb. Yeah. Uh, but most of the time I don't because I don't want to get nobody pregnant. <laughs> For sure. I don't want no. That, that's no, always. Good. I don't want no, no nothing on me. I don't want, you know, I don't want to be right. in the hospital. I don't want none of that. He don't want to put feelings into it, right? You see that? Right. That's why he want to be by himself. 
Yeah, well, my, my that only too. concern <laughs> at this point in life. But you know, my only concern at this point in life is yeah, I leave, man. It. He want to mess all these girls. <laughs> heads I know up. I don't want to mess nobody up. Yeah, like man. like my thing is that they're gonna do it anyway. They're I'll, gonna do it anyway. Might as well it's be just with like you, huh? drugs. Drugs sell themselves. It's, if it's, you don't do it, so like, why would you go work at McDonald's <laughs> when you could be paid in full? That's all I'm saying. So if they gonna get smashed anyway, why I gotta go home and play with myself? And they over there making whole videos. Because you're you're saving them from hurt. They gonna get hurt anyway. Well, it ain't gotta be by you. Though. <laughs> no. It, it, again, it's a difference in <laughs> it's right. a difference in what reality is yeah. and what your reality is. Uh huh. You see what I'm saying? So like, let's say we own a business, right? I could tell Marcus, like, hey, we ain't gonna be able to pay you. So if you want to help us do this, like you're volunteering, he says, okay. But at the end of the day, if he come back with his hand out, we told you from the beginning, we're not going to pay you. We we may not have the money allocated. So like the reality was not his reality. So we didn't hurt him, but we needed the, we needed his help. But if he chooses to help us after we say we can't pay you, that's on him. So to the same token, if you meet somebody and you tell them, hey, look, I'm not looking for something serious. I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. In the case, like, he travels, you know, like, you move in. Because like, you're not going to see that person yeah, again. Yeah, right, I'm right. going when, back to America tomorrow. That's what I was I'm saying. I'm not going to be Skyping you every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I have literally been with some people, like, and they came back, you know, when I was in the middle, they came to the crib, and I'm like, they came over, and I'm like, man, you know what? Like, we ain't got to do nothing. You, you can. Because I'm, I'm going to keep it real. <laughs> I'm going to call you tomorrow and make sure you made it home safe. You know, I'm going to check and see how your day going. But I don't have five hours throughout the day to talk to you every day. That, that's not going to happen. No, shouldn't be. And they looking at me like, will you shut the F up? Like, I, I ain't thinking about tomorrow. But then afterwards, why you do me like that? It ain't about you, sweetie. It's about me. I got a reputation to maintain. <laughs> so just because you <laughs> like it, it don't mean you're not special. I'm special. I, I deliver a certain product. It's that ain't that ain't you, it's me. So kudos to Marcus. Again, I'm just saying, Marcus. like, but but I understand what he's saying because his is more of an intentional I'm trying to For sure. you know, just like mine was intentionally, I was intentionally doing wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> I applaud him in that and that's why I wanted I, to ask when him. When I like, do mess up, I try not to condemn myself i just try yeah to, that's the that's the part right there yeah that's the part keep it moving that's the know. part that's the that's that could be the toughest part as far as not to um you know shame yourself to a degree of you can't you know continue to move forward one thing i do try to stay away from is the 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 porn yeah because i feel like that's more dangerous than actually meeting with right yeah, yeah so porn is more dangerous than you actually being with okay my bad. I just, I'm glad somebody else said that. <laughs> okay. For this guy over here. Yeah. I, yeah. The, no, let me, let me just clarify from what he was saying. I, we had a, a, a conversation. The episode of season it, it was one. an episode as Check well. the episode out, by the way, season but one. I was saying, as far as both of them are evil, correct? I was saying both of them are evil. You watch a porn, not, not the... you go get some cutty from somebody else, right? So I'm saying it's strings attached, emotions attached. Everything uh, could be eighteen year baby attached to this mm -hmm. young lady. Now, I, or I could just go watch this porn and be done in five to ten minutes, whatever you know. However, your situation is. Or you just use your imagination. Or use your imagination from your previous porn that you may have watched, <laughs> or previous encounters that you have. And I was just like, that was for me at the time, like the lesser of two evils because I'm not getting yeah. anybody else involved. I'm not, I can't get an STD for myself. Now, long term, yeah, porn can be more. More, uh, more marriages have been imagination. messed up because yeah. of porn though. Imagination. imagination is better than yeah. the porn. Because if you, you actually can... had sex, you know this, like real sex and porn is not the same. You go trying to do some of that BS and real sick, somebody gonna look at you like you crazy. It's women who were teenagers that got turned off of sex because they watched porn. And it's like, I don't wanna do nothing. I don't wanna do nothing like that. So then yeah. now they get married and then their husband pissed off because that woman don't wanna have sex with them. 
but it's because they got turned off by porn. And right. real real sex ain't like that. It, it's a lot of dudes that their woman is not satisfying them because you got in your mind porn. Right. And so now it, it's not sat you, like like it's not mm-hmm. like your your woman if it could be given it to you like uh It could be destructive both ways. That's what I'm saying. But, I've never <laughs> At the, at the end of the day, porn ain't ruined nothing I'm doing because I don't really, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not something I indulge in. I'll right, be trying right. to do that goofy yeah. stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I got, and again, like a woman tell you, like, oh, I like it this way. No, you don't. You like what I give you. Why do you like what you like? Hold up. Think about it. Why do you it like what you like? Me. You like what you like because somebody did it to you. You didn't know. You weren't a virgin and you said, I like this position. Somebody put you on to that. Right. That's why you like it. So you're going to like what I give you because I'm good at what I do. I can't do what you do. I can't do what Vic do. I can't do what Keenan do. I can't do what Marcus do. I can, But I can do what I do well. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to like that because that's all I'm going to give you. I'm not going to try to do it, JB, because our bodies are di- like. Yeah. So if I try to do your move, yeah. she's going to be looking at me like, oh, is that it? <laughs> but that you you can do your move because of all of that. Yeah. So again, I don't. I didn't let that ruined what I was doing, rhyme intended. So, you know what I'm saying? Again, I don't have a expectation of somebody when I'm with, and so hopefully when I do say I do, all I need for my wife to do is you just be there, baby. I got you. I just need you to be a soldier. Be a soldier. I just need you to be a soldier. Sound good. You know what I'm saying? Like like when I roll over, I just need you to stay there till it's over, and we good to go. His guy. Oh, I will. I will say it's it's real, real talk. It's the traveling and the preparation and the rehearsals. By the time the day is over, you, I'm exhausted. Yeah, like right. the only thing I want to do is sleep. Just chill out. Yep. Even going out at the end of the show, like to eat, I don't even want to do that. I just want to go back to my room <laughs> and right. go to sleep. Yeah. It's like it's 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 a lot of work. It's a lot of. And you feel it at the end of the day. It's a lot of you're you just too tired. To take that personal. Some uh, people this is going another direction. Like, but even in relationships, like you're somebody like well, you know because your your work schedule and then with kids like me and my work schedule, you work a lot. Have you found that people take it personal when you don't? Because like you said, I, when I when I'm done, you just want to go lay down. Like nigga, leave me alone. Like I just want to chill. But like, do they take it personal? Like. You don't want to be around them, or some people take it that way, and it's not that. It's just like I'm just really tired. I'm just really right. tired, yeah. And I, I just, my, my body is about to shut down, right? So I, I, I and, it, and like I said, it's, it's even because people like to go out to party and sorry, go out, to, go out and you know hang out at all hours of the night, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like this last gig I had in Colorado. The, the group I was with, oh, we want to go. It was in Colorado Springs. They want to drive up to Denver, which is like 45 minutes. It's pretty much one big city. I see. Uh, drive up to Denver and be up there till like 1 a.m. Like, I, I, nope. I, I, I got in the car. I went up there with them. By the time I got up there, I was like. Ready to go. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't do nothing in Colorado because it didn't work out for Kobe. It didn't work out for John Morant. It is good. Right. Right Marcus King on the news, like you know what I'm saying, right. out there in Colorado. <clears throat> so, I was falling asleep. So what what you what you got coming up, man? Because I know you had uh you put out the thing, you going to New York. Yes. Tell us about uh, that. How you how did you get it and what's going on? Uh I'm going to sing in Carnegie Hall. Mm. Um Big June Big June the ninth. So mm. in two weeks. weeks. Yep. Um they're doing an opera, this group called Dakota, which is a uh, uh, premier group with Carnegie Hall. That's the the premier ensemble with Carnegie Hall. Mm-hmm. I guess when Carnegie Hall needs something, they call this group to come help them put, put it on. The opera uh, was written by a person that is still incarcerated in Sing Sing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few years back, uh, a famous soprano uh, did a program where mm. she went into the prisons and uh, did some music workshops with the prisoners. And uh, some, I guess she, some of the prisoners expressed that they want to write music. So one of them wrote an opera. 
Mm. Uh, so the opera is about his experience in prison. So uh, I, it's like five people in the cast, and the soprano, countertenor, which is the guy that can sing up real high, uh, tenor, well, for tenor and the bass baritone, which is me. So uh, I, I play a warden, and then I play one of the prisoners in one, one of the other scenes. So I'm doing that at Carnegie Hall during the 9th. I get that gig from a gig I'm actually doing in Minnesota in July. Uh, they recommend, The people in Minnesota recommended me to the people in New York, and that's how I got this gig a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, relationships. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and um, in between that, I'll be in Colorado Springs doing an opera called uh, Blind Injustice. Uh, it's about, uh, uh, basically, it's about five different people experiencing uh, the court system. Mm-hmm. These are all, these operas, they're like brand new operas, which is very exciting. Mm-hmm. I love being a part of new so work new, yeah. and music because sometimes classical music can have this, this you know, you think about Beethoven and Mozart, and that's all that you hear about. But it's right. people writing Hayden music. and Bach and... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's people writing music now, mm-hmm. uh, younger people about issues going on now. So this opera that I'm going to do in Colorado Springs is about you know people being railroaded by the justice system, mm-hmm. uh, and I play a, a young black man that witnessed a crime, but when the police got to me, they pinned the crime on me, and then I got put in the court system and all this stuff and. Uh, it's it's a very heartbreaking opera, but it's a very poignant opera. Okay. So yeah. more of those kind of operas are coming along where it speaks to various communities. It speaks to what's going on now. And uh, it seems like my singing career is, is going towards newer opera because I do a lot of new opera here in Memphis. Mm, okay. uh, the general director here at Opera Memphis, he's told us that this is the kind of opera that he loves to do. Uh, the old stuff, the museum type stuff is fine, but he loves putting yeah. on, like the one we just got through doing, The Falling and the Rising, mm-hmm. which is about uh, the lives of five soldiers mm-hmm. uh, in their uh, psychological journey, uh, the things they went through in war. Uh, but... I'm really excited to be a part of these new works, these new projects, and um, I will be gone until August. Wow, until pretty August. much off and on. Now, in between, I got two weeks in June where I'm here, and I'm going to be in a music instructor for a Memphis Jazz Workshop. Mm. And do you uh, you got an agent now? You got an agent? That's the, that's on my to do list. That's year. on your to do list. Okay. Right, so he's still doing all this stuff without an agent, but now when he come yeah. back in June, you know that's what I was telling you. He's actually going to be singing a hook on one of my songs. Yeah. You know. What oh I'm yeah, you so did like, say that. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So like this, and it was crazy. And I was telling him, and I, and I was telling you, Keenan, that was the one who I had told like some years ago. Like, man, I want to get him on the hook. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to get him on the hook to sing. Like, I just don't have the song. Like. I don't just want to make up a song like I need to write a song. And so, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got yeah. it. It's like, oh, shoot. Like, I've been had this song. And, like, now I kind of got, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm definitely going to be stealing his talent. You, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you can probably do, like, voiceover for, like, Disney movies or something like that. What it sound like. Like, all certain the, stuff all like that. that. I, can, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. I can all see that. that. I would love, I love them to give me a call. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, bro, I yeah. appreciate you coming through. Oh, and For also, sure. hold up, before What's we up? go, like, where can people find you at? Like, so if people are interested in what you're doing, like, where Do can you want people to find you? you? Or, like, oh, just yeah. your social media <laughs> stuff. <laughs> um, you go to Marcus King on Facebook. Um, and then on my Instagram, I'm making, uh, at making28. Uh, like, making, M-A-K-N-G, 2 8. Um, and I'm working on a website. So I'm, that's all my to-do list as well. Definitely the website, yeah. So, uh, but uh, in my YouTube channel as well, Marcus Antonio King, I got a lot of videos there. You can check them out. Is there. he gonna follow you on on your journey like this summer or anything? 
Yes, I'm. I'm gonna post a lot on social media. You can take Crown Vic as long as he's back to record us. Right. Yeah. You exactly. know he can. Uh, you know. Yeah. No. I say yeah. You can take Crown Vic <laughs> as long as he's back to come. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, right. No, no. Yeah. What I'm saying. I mean, cause yeah. He like, can say he might. Hey, because you know what? We, we would love to have. Because he like New York anyway. Because right, he a yeah. giant now. So you know, right. he, he, oh, he Carnegie right, okay. Hall. Yeah. You know what we, I mean? we would love to have Mr. Stewart in here helping out. But yeah, you know, I got a couple more. I got a couple more cousins, and and if I just can't place, I think one of them was with the Eagles. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I had, I had one that played for the Chiefs. Yeah, Always the Eagles. Huh? No, no Cowboys. Okay. All right, but uh, player, I wish Ray, one. Ray. I wish one was with a cowboy. Yeah, man, you, you need to be you know, any Ragless nigga. <laughs> it's a Ragless. Need to be on the American oh, oh. team, huh? Oh, okay, that's what's up. The Raven, he your cousin on EG side, on EG over there. That's your dad's side, friends. Dude, I had a cousin from uh, Chicago that asked about you. <laughs> that boy was a beast. That boy was a beast. That boy was a beast. All right, y'all, but until next time, continue. With that executive mindset. And most definitely keep it presidential. Salute. Reva Dirtie. Bow.